Today's project is a ramen bowl. I have placed 2 kg of sanded buff clay on top of the full size throwing bat. I begin by working from the base of the clay mound to ensure secure attachment. Since the clay is large, I apply more pressure from the side, necessitating a stable foundation. Now the clay is securely attached to the bat. I begin working from the top and gradually move downwards to accommodate its size. I focus on the top half of the clay mound to equalize its density and ensure it is centered. Even if the lower part is not centered yet, it's not a problem at this stage. My right hand's palm edge presses down on the top of the clay from the 5 o'clock position towards the 11 o'clock direction. While my left hand fingers hold the clay to prevent it from forming a mushroom shape. Once the top is centered, I begin to descend gradually. Since the upper clay has already been treated, I only need to apply force to the new part. This prevents the large clay from becoming unmanageable. If I were to attempt this process from the bottom all at once, the clay wouldn't cooperate due to insufficient power on my part. Now that the top half is ready, I can focus on the bottom. My right wing and little fingers apply pressure to the clay at the bottom. My left hand applies pressure from the outside, positioned slightly higher than the right hand. I avoid applying pressure at the same level from both sides. Offset the position of both hands creates a spiral effect with a spinning wheel, allowing the clay to rise smoothly. I constantly return the accumulated soft clay back to the lump of clay with my right thumb. This action maintains a slippery surface on the clay. Now the cone is smooth and centered. I begin shaping the base disc. Using my right palm edge positioned at 5 o'clock, I press down on the top. This time, my palm edge is close to horizontal as I aim to create a flat top. My left hand maintains the side flat. My left thumb supports my right hand allowing me to slide it outwards. My open hand measure 20 cm. For this project, I require an 18 cm base. I proceed to open the center hole. Using my right middle finger at a 45 degree angle, I start slightly off center and slide down towards the center. Starting with my finger at a vertical position for the center hole could result in it being dragged by the clay, causing me to lose center. By using this approach, there is less conflict with the clay, requiring less power. Conserving my energy is important, especially when throwing a 2 kg pot. 
At this stage, I aim for a bottom thickness of 2 cm. While this might seem thick, I'll compress the center before stretching the wall again and also during the stretching process using the gubera. So maintaining a 2 cm thickness now is ideal. Using my middle fingertip, I pull the clay towards myself. Digging into the wall about a centimeter, then I shift the clay above the middle finger to the top and compress it into the main body. I compress the base with a wooden rib to create a dense bottom and prevent an S crack. My left hand fingers continuously push the shifted clay back to the main body. Without this support, while using the wooden rib, the shifted clay wouldn't return to the main body and could be lost. The wall is now thin enough to stretch with two hands. My right ring finger tip is positioned at the 9 o'clock to press the bottom clay. This initial stretch is very gentle. I connect both thumbs to gauge the wall thickness and aid finger positioning. I compress the top from three directions to create a firm edge as stretched end tend to become thinner and weaker. As the wall thickness becomes easier to stretch, but the wall height increases, the wall may start to wobble in large sections. I spend a bit more time at the top to maintain stability. The final hand stretch while still maintaining the cylinder shape. Stretching the thin wall in cylinder shape is easier, especially near the bottom. Trying to shape a ball and stretching the wall simultaneously would make it more challenging. I create a groove at the bottom where my left hand will start in the next stretch. I use a gubera for the next stretch, a Japanese throwing tool used for stretching thin walls. Its curved end is ideal for shaping the bottom corner. My left hand is flipped upside down and positioned at 6 o'clock with my left index finger set at the previously made groove. The gubera's curb remains at the bottom corner for a while, and I press my left hand against it and slowly slide it up. I prepare the groove for the next stretch. The second stretch is similar, but I focus more on the bottom corner to create a natural curve. My left hand applies more pressure this time. As the position gets higher, the pot may wobble in larger pieces. I need to release the clay gently.
I use a wooden rib to compress the outside, making the next stretch easier. I check the thickness of the wall. I stretch more at the bottom corner as the upper part will be stretched when I open the pot into a ball shape. I aim to keep the thickness around 1 cm. This is a final stretch using my hands to fold the edge and make it stronger and aesthetically pleasing. As I reach the top, my left fingers push the edge outwards, while my right middle finger controls the folding speed from the opposite side. I must be careful not to trap air in the folded part and I can squeeze the rim from the top to release any trapped air. I make a straight line to measure the size. This is the size before opening the top. This gauge measures 20 by 13 cm. I use two gauges. One gauge is used before shaping, and the other after shaping, ensuring consistency in size. The gauge for the shaped ball measures 28 by 9 cm. I position my left hand index finger 2 cm outside the rim which is my stretching target. Then I slide the gubera down to the bottom center, while my left hand supports the wall to maintain its shape. I repeat this process until the ball reaches the desired size, focusing on creating a nice internal curve and preventing the wall from collapsing. After a few stretches, I use a chamois laser to compress the edge. I compress the outside of the wall before the next step. I repeat the process with plenty of water ensuring that any slight conflict doesn't drag the clay and spoil the bowl. As the bowl gets wider and thinner, it may start to wobble, but with a slippery surface and steady hand positioning, it will settle. I use a chamois laser again to create a strong edge. Finally, I clean and compress the outside ensuring a smooth surface. I check the size with a second gauge. For the finishing touch, I create a spiral decoration on the inside of the bowl. 
This spiral serves both decorative and practical purposes, helping to catch noodles with chopsticks. My left hand middle finger slowly moves up with slight pressure, while my right index and middle fingers sandwich it from the outside. I take final measurement. I trim the bottom corner to create a perfect circle. A clean circle is essential for top centering. When I removing the butt from the wheel, I choose the point where the pinhole is located. This prevents the butt from twisting and ensures the large ball remains stable. I compare two different stages, the right side just after throwing and the left side at the laser hard stage. When viewed from above, the laser hard pot appears significantly shrunk compared to the new one. During the drying process, the ball's rim tend to stand up. To counteract this, I throw the ball slightly wider and shallower than desired. As it dries, the shape adjusts to what I want it to be. Once the ball is slightly harder than usual, it's time for trimming. I only trim half the top as this ball has a spiral feature. I mark a 10 cm foot ring, which is my hand plus 1 cm. I use a metal spinner to rest my left fingers while trimming. This spinner is made of two discs with a bearing in between, allowing the bottom disc to spin with a pot. I start by trimming the corner up to the outside of the foot ring. Then trim the outside of the foot ring straight down. Next, I trim the inside of the foot ring going one centimeter inside the outline and making many circles towards the center. I remove the peak to create a flat surface and avoid a wavy surface which often occurs in trimming of wide flat surfaces. I repeat this process until the bottom clay resistance becomes soft when I press it. Then I return to the outside of the foot ring, bringing the outside line down to the inside.
both the inside and the outside of the foot ring are leveled, ensuring both sections have the same thickness. This is important for creating a nice continuous line with correct thickness at this rounded corner, making the ball lighter and improving its appearance. I adjust the foot ring according to my preferences. The foot ring diameter is less than half of the rim, giving it a lighter appearance. The edges are polished to be strong and table friendly. Already the outside of the foot ring is slightly cut into the corner for easy gripping and stability on the table. When pots are user friendly, they are used more. So practicality is one of my key concepts. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching this pottery process. A ball shape is good practice after cylinder throwing. Happy creating and I'll see you in the next pottery video.